Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video or today's lecture we are going to talk about navigation mesh which is known as nav mesh. Now the nav mesh is basically a component that creates or makes area where characters can move or walk on. This guide is already detailed, you can go ahead and look into all the components that the nav mesh has and you can understand them really quick because it's very easy to understand but i'm also going to provide you visuals on how to set up a nav mesh and how to change nav mesh properties so let's head back to unity and start working with the nav mesh the first thing i want you to do is i want you to select the scene and type or hit tilde on your keyboard in here if you have the ai nav mesh or all the overlays not showing you can check overlays and in here I want you to make sure that the AI navigation is enabled if you can see the eye icon then it's enabled if it's crossed then it's not enabled once you enable that you can select or hover anywhere to get rid of it and here in the AI navigation expand surfaces and then select show nav mesh if I disable it you can see here that the grid is gone and enable nav mesh as well as this gizmo right here. If I turn this off, it won't show. So you have to click on this gizmo. And here you can pretty much change whatever you want or like you can customize this however you want. But for now, just keep this as it is. You can also enable more stuff in here, but you don't have to. Um, I only want the nav mesh. Now that's done, you can minimize this. And let's start with the basics of nav mesh. Now you can see in this scene we have a floor and it's also highlighted in blue. Now this highlighted area is where the avatar can walk. Now if I spawn the avatar and if I walk and you can see here there is a trash bin, I can go or pass through the, the trash bin. But I can't do it through this cube and that's because the cube has a certain height that blocks the nav mesh as well as components that you can add to make this an obstacle so players avoid it so for example if i were to duplicate this so i'm going to select this floor right here duplicate it and then i'm just going to move it a bit like so you can see now that the blue uh, highlight is gone and this is because it doesn't have a nav mesh now how to create a nav mesh it's really simple you basically go to the hierarchy right click create empty and you can call this whatever you want for example nav mesh example and in here you can add a component search for nav mesh and it's the nav mesh surface which i'm not going to do right now because if you started a basic template you should already have a nav mesh so i'm going to delete this right click delete and you can see here that we already have a nav mesh now this is you every or like literally the entire scene can only work or will only work with one nav mesh because you don't need to have many you just only have one which is the nav mesh surface because in here in the nav mesh surface you can see we have two buttons one that says clear one that says bake meaning that this nav mesh without the one that we have right now is is baked it means that the player can actually walk on this surf but the player cannot walk on this surface and the player will not view these object as obstacles and this is because we have the old nav mesh which is the previous one okay because if i click on this one it's gonna if i click on the nav mesh data it's gonna direct me to the um, scene settings remember in the previous lectures and you can see here that we have a nav mesh uh, settings that you can mess around with but basically it saves the entire thing in this file right here so let's go ahead and bake the nav mesh again so to do it, you can just click bake or you can clear. Now you can see the nav mesh is gone, the settings is gone. If I click bake and now it did bake the nav mesh for us. It's that simple. And you can also see that it already detect the object that we added. And for example, it will just prevent the player from walking or on top or like go past. That's for the nav mesh. If you have an nav mesh like this, and for example, let's say you move this object to here, but you don't want to bake the nav mesh, you just want to make this object a, an obstacle. What you do is you select the object, you go on the inspector, add a component, you search for nav mesh again. Oops, sorry, nav mesh. And in here, you select nav mesh obstacle. 
and you didn't have much obstacle, you can choose the shape of the obstacle, whether it's a box or a capsule. You can tell here by the size of it, box or a capsule, which makes more sense if I put a capsule because of the shape of the eye or the, the lamp. But for now, I'm going to use box. And in here, you can hit the carve and this will make basically make a cut in the nav mesh, which will prevent the players from moving or walking over it. And in here, you can change the size however you want. You can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. It's really up to you, even like how tall it is. You, see, you can mess around with the settings however you want. This There's no rule for these settings, okay? This is if you were to add um, an obstacle. But right now, if, if I go ahead and bake the nav mesh again, because remember, every time you move something in this scene, you have to bake the nav mesh again. So if I go to the nav mesh and I hit clear, you can see here that we still have player cannot walk on this area because we had or we used to have a lamp here but if i clear and if i bake it again now the player can walk but the player cannot can can still walk here because we still have the nav mesh obstacle so let's remove that go to nav mesh clear and then bake you can see here that it worked and this is probably it for the navish just remember that every time you make changes to your world to your game you will have to bake the nav mesh this is there's two rules which is baking lights and baking nav mesh every time you make some changes you have to bake both lights and nav mesh i'm not going to talk about lights yet we will get to lights in lecture 10 but for now I want you to understand that every time you do something, you just bake the nav mesh so the player can walk on it. There are a few settings that you can change in the nav mesh, which are more advanced. I'm not going to go in details over everything in here, but I'm going to show you a quick example of what I what I mean. Um, there's this cube, for example. If, if we change the size of this cube, like the Y size, let's say... 0.4 and we move it a bit down or like uh yeah that's about it and we just bake the nav mesh again so i'm gonna go to nav mesh clear bake you can see the player can now walk on top of that box and that's because the nav mesh has a certain height which i think it's 0.5 so for example if this goes above 0.5 like 0.6 or 0.6 and I move it down like like so, I think. I think that's about it. And I go to nav mesh, clear, bake. You can see it's cut now. And that's because we have a certain height. So you might wanna be like wanna be careful whenever you place objects, just make sure that everything is, is baked correctly. Or like the player can move around and don't make it that players can walk through objects because it's ugly. <laughs> But yeah, uh, that's, pret that's pretty much all. I'm not going to go ex and explain every single thing about the nav mesh. We do have a lot of components. If I go here, add component, nav mesh, uh, nav mesh agent. This is related to the character. The character has it by default. There's a nav mesh uh, modifier and the modifier volume, which is it's also makes you uh, override an area or like add or remove an object, which is, yeah, there's a lot of things to explain, but it's... It's all written in the documentation page if you want to go on in deep or in depth. But for now, this is all you need to understand about mesh, about nav mesh. Um, I'm going to see you in the next lecture. We are going to make the avatar jump from this surface to this surface. So stay tuned for more lectures.